Hi everyone, I'm Daniel, here to talk a little bit about Microsoft's announcement of Windows 10 S and the Surface Laptop, which I've actually got some hands-on time with, so I'm going to share my impressions of that. But first, I wanna go over what Windows 10 S is, this new version of Windows that Microsoft announced. So primarily, this is a version of Windows that only runs applications from the Windows Store. If that sounds familiar, that's because that's what Windows RT was on the original Surface device. And that, of course, did not go very well for a variety of reasons, which I'm sure anyone watching this is well aware of. Long story short, however, is, is very limited the App Store was new, there were basically no apps in it, and no one wanted it. The theoretical difference now is that Windows 10 is much more mature, the store is much more mature, there are some more wider variety of apps in the store now, they are of certainly a much higher quality. And so Microsoft is, some people might say otherwise, that this is the future of Windows if you think about it too much, but what it breaks down is that Windows 10 S is a version of Windows that is meant to compete with Google Chromebook and those and the Chromebook devices. So this OS is primarily meant to be put on low-end machines to have so it's very limited and to compete with Chromebook because that has made very large headways in education. Microsoft is trying to get back into schools using this Windows 10 S version of Windows 10 in order to get back in there. And so this version can only run store apps. Uh, main differences are that Windows 10 S, unlike RT, can actually run on x86 processors. So Intel and AMD machines will be able to run this. And then also on top of that is with Microsoft's new development software, x86 apps, your traditional Win32 apps can be ported into the Windows Store using Microsoft's what they call the Centennial Bridge. Those can be ported into the Windows Store with a wrapper on it so that they run as a UWP app. And so if that's done, you can then run those sorts of apps on a Windows 10 S device. And so in conjunction with this announcement, Microsoft announced that uh, Office 365, the, the newer 2016 Office apps, will be making their way to the Windows Store. Specifically, it was, they showed Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, and Outlook. I don't know if things like uh, Publisher will make their way. Uh, we'll see. But, so that's pretty cool. So that would uh, make them easier to update, certainly, if those apps are in there. And if you only need certain apps, you don't have to download all of them. Now if you do try to download and install an executable from the internet, you'll get a pop-up telling you that you can only run apps from the store and if the system is aware of what you're trying to download and install, it may try to recommend then something from an alternative from the store to install, which is kind of cool. Um, a couple of uh, other bullet points that they talked about. Uh, it boots, this version of Windows boots a lot faster than Windows 10 Pro, uh, five seconds compared to 15 seconds for Pro. And uh, in conjunction with all of their education stuff, there's a new feature in Windows 10 S where in the setup process, there are you know conv configurable settings when you're setting the system up. You can then plug in a USB to copy those configuration settings and then just take that USB, plug it into uh, another machine that is, that is you know fresh boot installing Windows 10 S for the first time. It'll automatically just 
take that and run with it so you don't have to sit there and click through every single thing to set up the system, which is nice. Uh, Microsoft uh, also has Intune for education, which is enterprise management software for computers and that's uh, has some education focus to it now. Uh, finally, so for these Windows 10S devices, the, the, the Windows book, Windows Chromebook competitors, uh, Microsoft has lined up Acer, Asus, Dell, HP, Samsung, Toshiba, and Fujitsu, uh, all coming out with Windows 10S devices this year. Starting at $190, all of them come with one year free of Minecraft Education Edition, which they talked a lot about how Minecraft uh, is used as educational tool in schools, which, you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see, what else? Got uh, Windows 10S is free for all schools uh, with PCs already running a version of Windows Pro, so Windows 8 Pro or whatever the equivalent of Pro was for 7 and Vista. If these schools want to install Windows 10S on their machines for whatever reason, it's free for them to do so. And then also Office 365 is free in some way. Uh, if they weren't entirely clear if that was just a one year free thing or if it's only for educational partners. But Office uh, is free in some way for these Windows 10S machines. I don't want to pass judgment on this quite yet. I'm waiting to see what Microsoft has to say at Build here next week, actually, I think, or the week after next. Microsoft has a lot of issues right now in terms of the future of Windows. Sure, everything looks fine and dandy. They're releasing new builds with cool new features and stuff, but they're losing ground to Android, to Chromebooks, primarily. And so they really need to get this app stuff going. They need to get, they need to be plur, more plur, they need to be more prolific on more devices, which up until now, they haven't been doing a good job of this. Windows 10S is an attempt to force the store in front of people and thereby hopefully getting more developers to port their apps, their, their Win32 apps into the store, which will get people to use them. And then of course, this is another step. This is just a short term step in the eventual goal of all apps now being uh, UWP apps and not Win32 apps and the, those dinosaur of software finally is extinct and they want everyone using UWP apps, more modern applications. So this is their next attempt to get people and developers moving towards that. We'll see if that actually happens. We'll see what they have to say at build if uh, developers are actually moving in that direction. I'm, I'm hopeful, but not excited, especially with what they've done with mobile lately. Uh, I don't believe I mentioned yet, also it's very important to mention that every version of Windows 10 S will be upgradable to Windows 10 Pro. So for a $50 fee, you can go ahead and unlock the system and go willy nilly with it. So that's a thing if Microsoft's partners really want to put Windows 10 S on the systems and sell them in Best Buy and whatever. If you buy one of those systems, don't realize it don't like it, for an extra $50, you can go ahead and unlock it uh, and install Pro, so that's nice. But, big news, new hardware. It's always big news with Microsoft. We finally have the Surface laptop. People have been clamoring for this ever since, probably the Pro 3 was announced, but really once the, the Surface book was announced, my, people just want a dedicated Surface Laptop, and now we finally have it. So real quick, the the highlights, 
It's a 13.5 inch screen, three by two aspect ratio, so similar to the Surface Book. And you've got a Core i5 and an i7. Now these are uh, Intel U processors, not Y, U. So these are fairly beefy processors. So that's nice. Uh, still only integrated graphics though. Starts at $1,000 for the i5 128 gig SSD, but only four gigs of RAM. Come on Microsoft, you're charging $1,000 for this laptop and you only put four gigs of RAM in it? Really? Honestly. Also, uh, ports. So this is, this product is very confusing, but I'll go over just the hardware first. So ports, you've got the Microsoft Magnetic Connector, same one that you've got on the Pro 3, Pro 4, and Surface Book. And then same ports as your Surface Pro. So you've got a USB Type A, a mini display port, and then I couldn't find it, but I believe somewhere on there there's also micro SD card slot. Um, and then that goes up to, I believe, two thousand two uh two hundred or three hundred dollars for a spec out i7 all the storage and whatnot a uh, few other technical points here uh supports surface pen let's see what else it's uh thinner and lighter than the macbook air and pro and they said it was at least, I mean, MacBook Air hasn't been upgraded in forever, but I believe they also claimed it was faster than the MacBook Pro. Uh, let's see, oh, the uh, speakers are integrated underneath the keyboard. There's no speaker grill whatsoever. That's thanks to the covering that is on the entire keyboard palm rest area. Uh, it's a fabric, like I, I believe there is a higher end uh, Surface Pro 4 type cover that you can buy that is made, uh, th so this is made out of the same uh, Alcantara fabric, sounds like a Star Wars planet. Uh, so this uh, fabric covers, instead of it being all metal, this fabric covers the entire keyboard area. And so they used some new fancy speaker technology and some Dolby technology in order to integrate the keyboard, uh, the speakers underneath the keyboard. And then, so then the sound comes out that way. Uh, Pre-orders start today and then it starts shipping in June. So I got some, oh yes, and they also said, oh, it's the thinnest LCD touch module on a laptop. Uh, oh, and they also claimed uh, 14 and a half hours of battery life. That is absolutely insane, especially for a device so thin and light. It was, it was like two and a half pounds, something like that, 2.6, 2.7, something like that. It's a ridiculously thin and light laptop for sure. And then they're claiming 14 hours of battery life. Obviously, whenever any manufacturer claims any battery life on a system, you don't get that in the real world because they do specific tests. It's, you know, 50% brightness and local playback of video and Wi-Fi is off. Sort of the weird tests that they do to get these battery life claims. But, you know, you don't get, you know, anything, you know, you know it's not like you're gonna get half of that. You're gonna get two, maybe three hours less than that, but that's still like 11 hours of battery life if you're for average use. Like that's an insane amount of battery life for a laptop, especially one this small. That's actually pretty cool. And so I went to my local Microsoft store. I'm lucky enough to have one relatively close to me. And I got to check out the Surface laptop. So as purely a piece of hardware, this thing is, amazing oh my god it's so good uh it's incredibly thin incredibly light it tapers so of course the the back at hinge end is a little bit thicker than the end that you open i want to say it's like 14 something millimeters on the hinge end and then like nine millimeters on the tapered end and so you could you uh you only need one finger to open it uh, 
a little bit awkward because it still has the the signature surface uh, squared off edges and so it was a little difficult to get my finger kind of up in there in the seam but once I did uh, the effort needed to lift the lid was very minimal and then it's weighted in such a way where the bottom isn't gonna like start tilting up with you uh, you just push that push it push the screen up and it goes and the laptop stays in place which is really nice uh, they didn't say whether or not it's made out of the same magnesium as other surfaces uh, it certainly felt like it. it felt really sturdy really well built the the alcantara finish the fabric that's on the keyboard if you've ever felt a uh, Surface Pro type cover, it's a lot more smoother than that. It's it's very consistent. It's not like on a you can you can feel the like the different strands in the fabric a little bit. There's more of a texture to the Surface Pro type cover. This one it's very smooth. You can still tell it's a fabric, but it's very smooth. Not silky smooth, but it's still it's very smooth, very nice. Uh, comes in a few different colors. So you've got the more traditional uh, surface uh, s silverish color. They have special names for them. Um, then there's a gold color, which I didn't get to see, unfortunately. Then there's a darker blue, a cobalt, I believe. And then there is a burgundy color. I actually really like the bur burgundy color. I thought I was gonna like the blue more, but in person, I was really liking that burgundy for some reason. It's a very nice color. Uh, for some reason right now, only the, there are two i5 models and two i7 models. Only that higher i5 model can you get the four colors. The other i5 and the two i7s you can only get in silver right now. I assume that's going to change at some point. Maybe they figure most people are going to go for that second i5, which is $1,300. I, I, I think they're guessing most people are going to go for that. So that's why there's more color range available there. Hopefully that expands as time goes on because it's kind of ridiculous if it doesn't. Because those are some really nice colors. Very thin, very light. The I had my Surface Pro 3 with me. I had it on me and I did a comparison. I don't remember what specifically the weight of the Pro 3 is, but just doing a both in either hand comparison. Uh, the Surface Laptop felt very similar uh, in profile and weight to a Surface Pro 3 with a Pro 4 type cover that I have on it, plus, plus a pen if you really want to count that weight as well. So like both like just weighing it out it seemed relatively the same and then as well as like holding it under my, my, in, in my hand and like holding it at the side felt relatively the same as well and that's surprising because the pro 3 is a 10 inch device and this is a 13 and a half inch no it's sorry the pro 3 is a it's a 12 inch and the surface laptop is 13 and a half so it's a significantly larger device the the profile of it is noticeably larger but in terms of like the, the feel of it just holding it it feels really great, really good. It's basically just a MacBook with a Microsoft logo slapped on it. It's a really well-made device. And in the Windows Store, they had a HP with the X360. And then there was, of course, the, uh, the, the, the Dell XPS, which I checked out as well. And there were some aspects that I liked about those laptops, those Ultrabooks, because those are top of the market ultrabooks right now aspects i really liked about them but surface laptop just nails every single detail and it's really good the one major complaint i have as a device with the surface laptop is the inclusion of so it does support the surface pen but like dude i saw that in when they announced this and panos was showing off the surface laptop Immediately, I noticed this. He's holding the screen as he's going to use the Surface Pen on there. I'm just like, what are you doing? 
clearly this is just tacked on for the sake of being tacked on it makes no sense the screen doesn't flip all the way around which i thought it was going to but in order to make it as thin as possible they couldn't have the my guess is having a hinge that would allow it the screen to go all the way around would make the device thicker they didn't want that and so it doesn't but like come on ridiculous here's the giant caveat with this device it comes running you guessed it windows 10 s for this whatever reason because it's microsoft's flavor of the day i guess but this high-end premium device it is a very premium device it starts at a thousand dollars it's less than the surface book but it's still a thousand dollars and only comes with four gigs of ram anyway and it's targeted specifically at college students they expect this device to last people four years that's why it has every single detail nailed that's why it has a super long battery life they, they want this thing to last people four years and it runs store apps only out of the box that is completely inexcusable so on a device level i really like this thing it's perfect zoom out from there as a product what are you getting how is it marketed this device makes absolutely no sense whatsoever so first off it only comes in windows 10 this until the end of the year you can get a free upgrade to pro from there out you have to pay the 50 dollar upgrade free for windows pro marketing this to college students and they talked a lot about stem students specifically i could tell you right now as an engineering student i need desktop applications by not putting windows 10 pro on your thousand dollar laptop is a spit in my face i don't care if you're going to allow me the privilege to download it for free if i buy it within a certain period of time or you make the argument that oh it's i'm already spending a thousand plus dollars fifty dollars is nothing like no if you're targeting this at college stem students who need win 32 desktop applications they, they need them then don't put your very restrictive OS on there. Put your pro OS on there and let us run free. Completely asinine. And then zoom out a level further. This makes no sense in the story of Surface, what Surface devices are supposed to be. So the Surface Pro line, at least once you got up to the Pro 3 and now the Pro 4, category defining devices these are devices that take a category and turn it on its head and then make something ultra premium and say this is how you do this and so a couple of years after the launch of the pro 3 and you now have microsoft's uh, hardware manufacturer partners are now making very similar devices to the surface pro so much in fact that's now eating into the sales of the surface line that's what microsoft's intention with the surface pro was go out there and make a fantastic device to, to uh, steer the hardware industry in a certain direction similar with the surface studio we've had all-in-ones but Microsoft wanted to uh, create, uh, you know, turn all-in-ones on its head. And so you have, you know, the, the crazy hinge and the uh, inclusion of the Surface Pen and then the Surface Dial if you want to get crazy. That was never done before on any all-in-ones as far as I'm aware of. Sure, you had the, the Wacom Cintiq but that's just a standalone screen as far as I know, and it's meant to be more like a secondary screen. It's not the machine. It's not an all-in-one like the studio is. Uh, of course, the Surface Book, 
the initial reveal of, hey, this is our laptop, but also it's a tablet, oh my God. And then it turns around and all this other crazy stuff and the the GPU was in the, the keyboard, which as far as I know, that's not done on any computer before. I just realized this video is going very long, so I'm gonna try to wrap this up. Surface laptop is literally just, like I said, it's a MacBook with a Microsoft logo on it. There have been premium laptops, Ultrabooks made already. Like I mentioned, the, the HP X360 and the Dell XPS that I checked out at the Microsoft store were really nice devices. I think that out of first impressions, the Surface laptop is better. Like I said, it nails every single detail but there's no reason HP or Dell couldn't have done, gone out and done that. It's just a laptop. It serves no purpose in Microsoft's story of Surface. It simply is a product for the sake of making a product. Uh, and it has features simply for the inclusion of having them, like the pen support, which makes no sense. And I feel like this product is so incredibly confusing and I still am not entirely sure what to make of it. Uh, like I said, it's really nice. If I didn't need uh, the, the writing aspect of the Pro right now as a student and I still needed a portable device, Surface Laptop would be at the top of the list, not gonna lie but it's still very confusing when you're selling a premium product to STEM students specifically, but limiting its potential out of the gate. Makes no sense. That's it for me. Thank you all for watching for this long. If you have uh, to see more of my thoughts, I will also link below. Uh, my story on tested of what Microsoft announced today. Thank you all for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.